Hi, right, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be discussing if flesh tone is effective at erasing tattoos. Here's a hint, it's not. All right. All right, we're back. So I, I've had a lot of people come to me in the past uh, little bit talking about cover-ups and how it's best to try and remove the cover-up ahead of time. And what people are trying to do is get rid of it enough so that they believe that the work that they're putting on top of it is going to cover what they're doing. And one of the most efficient ways to do that, some people have claimed, is to use flesh tone over top of the tattoo and then do the tattoo on top of it. And I'm here to tell you that it can work sometimes, but more often than not, it is the least efficient way to actually do the tattoo. So, why is that? When we have a tattoo, and we have it in the skin, right? And we just, let's just do this, yee. Let's put our little tattoo here of our crazy little skull and crossbones, right? And we're trying to think about how to cover this up. Our client comes in, they're like, oh, you know, I want to cover it up with a fine line flower or something. And you're like, oh dear, what am I gonna do? Well, it's easy, I'm just gonna grab flesh tone, and I'm gonna mix it on top of this, tinting that person's skin to get near right, what is already on them. And it, in painting, this would work, right? But we have a few things working against it, right? One is melanin. <laughs> melanin, uh, which we're gonna be putting the tattoo underneath, right? So that's our first layer. So we have to contend with the person's natural skin tone that we're not actually influencing. We're influencing what's underneath it. Um, the second is gonna actually be the actual pigment itself. And this comes down to pigment load, right? Like the skin can only hold so much. It's not a, an empty vessel that must always be filled like the child brain that's been described in modern educational institutions, which is not right. Um, so when we start getting into this, like if, if there's only so much that, that the skin can handle, every time that we apply something new to it, we're only gonna be reducing the total quantity there by what we can already remove, displace, or disrupt. What I mean by that, every time that we go over tattoo, we force the body to heal. When we have the body heal, about 60 to 70% of the tattoo that has been installed in the skin is actually going to stay in the skin, right? Some of it's gonna get lost. That's why we see, you know, when tattoos heal, they don't look as vibrant because some of that pigment has been ejected and then the melanin <laughs> containing skin on the epidermis is covering it back up, occluding the actual image. So each time that we go over top of it, we're damaging the melanin, making it look a little bit more vibrant, and then also dropping the pigment either into the body or expelling it through the healing process, right? So that, in that, in that process doing that, it, it's not actually reducing the total pigment load because if you have a very well-saturated tattoo that is well-established that has not been in the skin for very long, it is structurally sound and you're gonna have to do a massive amount of trauma to try and disrupt it enough to increase the chances of that flesh tone actually covering it. More likely what's gonna happen is the, the, the color that's actually in the skin first is gonna dominate the playing field and you're only gonna be able to slowly start tinting it with flesh tone, slowly making it look more like what you assume their skin tone is like at that given time. If the person tans, if it changes seasons, seasons while you're doing this, etc., you're going to see that change as well because the melanin on the body is over top of it, right? So if you're doing a pigment match, it's not going to look the same. It's going to end up looking different. It may even make it more evident uh, if you're working with colors that aren't things like black, right? So <clears throat> the pigment is just going to end up tinting. It's not very effective. The last thing you have to worry about is the constant passes are going to increase, uh, increase scarring. Because we're already trying to destroy this space, right? And get rid of those pigments because we know that it's underneath the melanin and we know that we're only going to be tinting the pigment. The next thing would be just to go over it real hard and try to knock out as much as we want, right? Once you get home client, you pick those scabs because we're going to make some nasty ones and you'll be pulling the pigment out of the skin. That's not right either. <laughs> You've got to really mess up the skin to start pulling out the pigment when you uh, pick scabs. And then when you're doing that, you are literally going to scar the body. This is not an effective way to do it. So rather than trying to just add flesh tone to it, if we know that these things are as they are, why not just go over the tattoo and slowly build it up, right? The tones that you're trying to achieve by using these same type of 
interactions, right? If we're trying to decrease scarring and we're only trying to tint the pigment up to a reasonable level, we'll choose a color that is going to modify what is already in there enough to bring it up to a tone and value that we want. If we're trying to get rid of a tattoo that's just black and they don't want it anymore, I'm sorry, they're permanent, you can go for laser treatments, that's not healthy, there's a lot of science saying that it's really unhealthy and it's slowly being trickled out into the world, but that's up to you, it's your body. I would not recommend it and I never recommend using laser treatment unless there is significant emotional trauma that is occurring from the tattoo and you need to get rid of it, by all means, do what you gotta do, right? But if you're just like, this was a bad mistake, oopsie, I was on spring break and I got drunk, I'm sorry, you should just live with it and remember not to do that again. What happens in Vegas most definitely does not stay in Vegas. We'll say that. Um, so yeah, you can do that. If you're gonna try to do this anyways, and you, you're gonna use flesh tone, just don't use flesh tone. Try using another pigment that we know is gonna have a greater chance of migration, right? If we know that flesh tone is gonna be a mixture of pigments that are actually relatively hardy, you can either try using ones that are less hardy, right? Which are gonna be bright colors mixed with white. Uh, with white or just white itself, or just white, right? Because we know that particle size wise, and if we actually look at like the atomic structures of like titanium dioxide, it's a highly attractive chemical that we're gonna be, or a compound, sorry, that we're gonna be putting into the skin. When we create the trauma, it's more likely to encapsulate the existing pigment that's in there. And since it's very small, it tends to get pulled down into the body quite easily, right? So what you're doing is you're actually gonna be dragging some of those colors deeper into the skin as you go. And once they've been pulled deep enough, it'll look light enough, you can literally go over top of it with another tattoo and just get rid of it, right? Because if that other tattoo pigment has been dropped low enough down and the skin starts to shrink, it will naturally just continually get pushed into the body, which is going to make for some very colorful lymph nodes and a not permanent tattoo. <laughs> um, the other thing that we can try to do is if somebody just wants to get rid of it and they are into flesh tone, you have to custom tailor your flesh tone to the individual. Rather than buying a flesh tone that is predispersed, because most of the time we'll actually see this where people will try to put flesh tone on top of it, it has a very isolated wavelength of light that it's being um, determined by the particles that are in there, right? And it's done through exclusion. Now when we have these organic pigments that are isolating specific wavelengths, they're actually isolating that wavelength. They're getting rid of everything else that's in there. They're not dropping out sections of visible light to increase the chances of this blended color appearing. They are just showing only that slice of that color. So if you're going to make a flesh tone, grab some red, grab some violet, grab some yellow, grab some white and black, and custom make that tailored tone for the individual. And once you do that, when you overlay it, because you're isolating larger segments of that visible light, it will actually cover it up more effectively and it'll work more appropriately with their melanin because it's going to allow more scattering to occur when light passes through whatever has been able to get through that melanized layer. That probably got a little bit sciencey. I apologize. But there you go. Flesh tone, is it effective? Some people will claim it will. I personally think that it's one of the least effective ways to cover up a tattoo. So try these other ways instead. Anyways. That's it. If you like this, subscribe, ask questions, comments, buy a hat, membership, coffee, whatever. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you next time. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.